The trip ticket program was established in 1984 to gather a census on commercial landings. These data are reported and submitted to FWC by Florida licensed wholesale dealers on a form known as a trip ticket. Trip ticket content includes who harvested the product, who purchased the product, what species and what amounts were landed, the trip date, area and depth fish, county landed, how the fish were caught, and the unit price and dockside value of the product. This important information helps provide sustainable marine fisheries management and supports the commercial fishing industry as it is used to assess the condition of fishery stocks, evaluate and establish regulations, validate an individual's qualification for commercial fishing licenses and endorsements, inform federal quota allocations, and request federal fisheries disaster funding. If you've been a longtime commercial dealer or harvester, you know the trip ticket program has adapted its practices over time. Trip tickets are required when commercial landings are first sold or transacted between a commercial harvester and a wholesale dealer. This includes instances when the wholesale dealer acts as his own commercial harvester. Trip tickets can be submitted as paper tickets sent through the mail or in electronic form through one of the two software programs, Vessel or PC Trip Ticket, also known as Florida Trip Ticket. One trip ticket is required for each trip. In general, Florida licensed wholesale dealers are required to submit trip tickets monthly, even if no activity occurred. However, there are some exceptions. Trip tickets are due on the 10th business day of the following month during which products were harvested. And just to clarify, the reporting requirements are different for dealers purchasing federally managed species like reef fish and HMS species. All transactions occurring in Florida must be reported to the trip ticket program, including product that was harvested out of state. Now that I've gone over the trip ticket program's current practices, I can discuss the need for revising the rules that establish the trip ticket program requirements. The trip ticket program has evolved over time by incorporating new reporting technology and standardizing reporting criteria with other Gulf and Atlantic states to facilitate management of fishery resources that cross state boundaries. Despite the program's advancement, the rules that establish the trip ticket program reporting requirements have not been updated in over 30 years. Changes to the rules are needed in order to align them with the trip ticket program's current practice. Other changes are needed to close loopholes in the rule by making it more clear who is responsible for reporting and when. Another reason why FWC needs to revise the trip ticket reporting requirements is that the paper tickets are becoming obsolete. The slider card machines are no longer made. The SPL licenses are no longer produced with the raised numbers to use those machines. And the paper trip tickets are made with triplicate carbon copy paper. And this paper is harder to come by. Additionally, we would like to match national industry standards, which include electronic reporting as the gold standard and shorter reporting periods. The shorting reporter periods increase the timeliness and accuracy of the commercial data. Electronic reporting is especially efficient for inputting multiple landings, and once the ticket is submitted, the information is received by the trip ticket office instantaneously. Electronic submission minimizes error, which increases the accuracy of the data. So how does this help you? The sooner we have the data, the faster we can meet federal requirements for data submissions to qualify for federal funding after a disaster like a hurricane. This means we can reduce the time it takes to prove a fisheries qualification for disaster assistance. Increasing timeliness and accuracy will also allow scientists and managers to have the most recent information on hand when evaluating fishery performance. Next, I will review the potential changes to the rules that would align them with the trip ticket program's current practice. It is important to note that these changes will not impact industry. The potential changes would clarify the following, that wholesale dealers must submit a trip ticket if the transaction occurred in Florida, that wholesale dealers who are also the acting harvester must submit a trip ticket regardless of how they catch the product, that all marine organisms must be reported, and add and update definitions. These rule changes and the changes I will be covering on the next two slides would be effective July 1st, 2025, in order to provide enough time for the commercial fishing industry to adjust to these new rules.
This slide lays out the potential rule changes that would improve the trip ticket program's current practices and therefore would affect industry. The rule changes would require Florida licensed wholesale dealers to submit a trip ticket for every reporting period, regardless of what they indicate in the dealer questionnaire. This rule change would make it so that every wholesale dealer is responsible for reporting themselves, even if the trip ticket is a negative report. One of the benefits to using electronic reporting is that a user can submit negative reports ahead of time relatively quickly. The rule changes would require all trip tickets be submitted electronically through vessel application. FWC must fully transition to electronic trip ticket reporting because the paper trip tickets are becoming obsolete. Out of the electronic reporting options, Florida trip ticket software will retire soon, making vessel the only reporting option. The effective date will ensure that wholesale dealers who are not using Vessel can make the switch. Additionally, recently uploaded Vessel training videos on the FWC website would assist the wholesale dealers in making the transition. Another change would be to establish a weekly reporting period and set the submission deadline to three days after the reporting period. This change would match the national industry standard and increase the timeliness of data. The last change would require commercial harvesters that harvest commercial quantities or by commercial methods to report to FWC if they donate their product to charity, retain their catch for personal use, or cannot find a buyer. Just a reminder that a commercial harvester cannot sell their catch to consumer without the proper licenses. One option for the commercial harvester to report would be to purchase a wholesale dealer license and then report through the tip trip ticket. However, staff do understand that this would not always be a desirable choice, and therefore we are working on ways to provide an alternative reporting channel such as an online form. This requirement would improve the accuracy of the data by better documenting all landings, not just those that are purchased. Staff plan on proposing to the commission that the rule changes go into effect on July 1st of next year, 2025, to allow time to do outreach and work with the commercial harvesters and wholesale dealers that the rule changes would affect. This last slide on the potential rule changes lists some of the non-substantive changes to the rules. This includes reorganizing the rule, removing a necessary language, simplifying sections, and moving the rule chapter with the other marine fisheries rules. These changes are being made to make the rule easier to understand and will not impact industry. The changes I have just reviewed have many benefits. Florida is a unique state in that it has a diverse and complex fisheries, which requires a high standard of data collection to effectively manage and conserve the fisheries. Therefore, we have a duty to embrace the opportunity to improve our data for the betterment of the fisheries and the industry who rely on them. One of the ways we could do this is by matching national industry standards by moving to an electronic platform and having shorter reporting periods. Currently, many of the state dealers are also federal dealers and therefore are beholden to the requirements of both entities. Matching requirements would make reporting to multiple entities easier for the dealers. Moving to electronic and weekly reporting would also increase the timeliness of data and therefore benefit the resource in the industry. This would improve FWC's ability to conduct timely assessments for fish stock health, evaluate and set federal quotas, and speed up our ability to request federal assistance after a disaster impacts commercial fishermen and wholesale dealers.